It's a rainy day here in Portland, and what better way to celebrate than to get a donut? These are one of those popular things to get in Maine, or Portland, I should say. I got two popular ones. I got a dark chocolate sea salt and also a maple. We're gonna try the maple first. Oh my God. Now the dark chocolate sea salt. Wow. That is so good. Don't you dare even go to Dunkin' Donuts when you're here. Go to the Holy Donut. Go to this location instead because the one downtown by the harbor, it's a huge line out front. I just successfully parked downtown. Parallel parking, may I add. I am shocked. I haven't parallel parked in who knows how long and I did it successfully. Man. We are currently walking down Congress Street, which is considered a popular place to go to shops. It's definitely not what I expected. I was expecting more of a sea town like Ocean City, New Jersey, when actually it's not the case at all. What I did discover is Portland has a meaning. It's from an old English word, Portlanda, and it means land surrounding a harbor. As you've probably noticed, there are a lot of brick buildings, and apparently they were built in the 1850s, but I can't figure out why. So if someone could tell me why that was done, please let me know, because I'm very curious. To sum it up, Congress Street is basically just a long street filled with shops and restaurants. That's it. Don't get me wrong, the streets are beautiful, and the buildings are stunning of their architecture, but it's just a lot of shopping and that's so much fun. Something else that I've noticed is there are a lot of local art shops. I think this is also considered an art district. So if you're interested in that, there are also options to see art around here as well. It feels like it's always raining in some sort of state. It was raining pretty much every single day so far that I've been traveling. You get used to it though. And what's nice is with the weather, there's not as many people. So win-win, right? Parking around Portland is <laughs> a crap show. Uh, when I first got here, it took me maybe over 20 to 30 minutes to find a spot where I didn't have to pay for something. absolutely loved the clam chowder. That was probably the best I've ever had. The lobster roll was a little bit harder for me to enjoy, but when I dipped it in the butter, it got so much better. I recommend if you do a lobster roll, get it with butter, dip it real good, and then it's gonna be delicious. That was an interesting experience. I, I'm not a huge seafood person, but I opened myself up to it and it wasn't that bad. Now on to the next thing. I wasn't able to get into the lighthouse. You do have to do a reservation in advance. It only cost about 10 to $15, but I still wanted to tell you a little bit of history about the lighthouse. There was a man by the name of Captain Mooney. He had this idea where they were going to build a signal system for those that had a vessel on sea 
so they can come in and they could communicate with one another. Now it's not a lighthouse, it's basically a way to communicate with those out on the ocean. In 1807, the original cost was around eight grand, which is crazy to think about. But then they had a restoration in 1998 that cost $1.2 million. It was really interesting to learn about it before I had to head out. But we're gonna start looking into parks maybe because I really wanna see a lighthouse along the shore. I think it'd be really cool for us to see. So I'm a low-key marine life nerd. I like learning about the ocean and its animals and everything a part of it. And as we see with these rocks, they have these lines and it looks as if it was created by the waves, I assume. And then we have these little tide pools, I also assume as well. And I need someone in my biology, marine biology, I'm sorry, to tell me anything fascinating about this because I didn't get the chance to in advance, but I just find it so interesting how these rocks were created or what's even living among here. Are there some sort of fish or some sort of crawfish? I don't know. So if you do know that information, please let me know. I would love to know so then I have a better understanding of what we're experiencing here. It's like a maze going through these rocks of trying to figure out, okay, if I step here, will I fall into the water? Will I lose my footing? Will I lose a shoe? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently this lighthouse is the most photographed in all Maine. So you get the pleasure of being here with me and seeing this most popular lighthouse. I've noticed that since I've been out here, I'm feeling much more calm. I don't know what about the ocean, but it gets me to relax. I feel so much more at peace, I guess. I'm even like that at the beach. Maybe it's the hearing of waves crash together. I don't know, but it's soothing. You know what I mean? While I was talking to you guys there, I almost slept. I was so close to falling into the water. Gotta be careful out here. We are in Fort Williams Park in Cape Elizabeth, Maine. It is about 20 minutes or so from Portland, so you can just drive over really quick and experience the beauty. Originally, this was called Fort Williams. It is a former military installation. It apparently begun in, what does it say, 1873, and it was known as the Battery at Portland Head. It was named Fort Williams after a general in the army named by South Williams. He was a native of Maine, and they decided to designate it in his honor. This is the remainder of the fort that's still here. Look at this killer view. Beautiful. This site is one of the largest of six gun batteries built in Fort Williams. There isn't any anymore, but it's still really cool to know that, that this was here at one point in the United States. Here's what it looked like. 
What I also found interesting is I read somewhere over there that apparently the lighthouse was the closest connection they had to communicate with Europe over the ocean, which I thought was really interesting. Can you imagine what that would have been like in the 1750s and that was your only way of communicating with people and now these days you just use your cell phone? <laughs> Something that I've been thinking about while traveling is what would it have been like for these people, these founders, to find these places in Maine, in New Hampshire and Vermont to say, we're going to settle down here and establish this as a national park or a state park or a lighthouse or an observatory. I want to know what it was like for them. I want to know what they were feeling. I want to know how they saw everything. I know that's not possible, but sometimes I just think about that, like what would have been like to be, be there with them and experience that. I cannot imagine what it would have been like to be in New Hampshire and look in the White Mountains and see the old man in the sculpture of the mountains or be in Vermont and say, hey, there's this sap that comes out and it's sweet. Let's make maple syrup or this coast is stunning, but this is another beautiful way to communicate with others over across the seas. Let's build a lighthouse. <sighs> History man. I did want to mention before we go on to our next location that at Fort Williams, you do have to pay for parking, but it's really cheap and it depends on how long you stay. So for example, I only stayed for two hours, but I paid like $3, which is really not bad. Look how adorable this lighthouse is. It's called Bud Light. We're at Bud Light Park. It's calming. It's right by the water. It's a little chilly, but it's just nice to sit down, take a break, and get some peace. Luckily enough, there's not a lot of people here, so it's not busy. There is limited parking, but it's, it's beautiful. We're in South Portland, so it's a little bit different over here, and I don't think it's as chaotic or as that much traffic. with myself. I thought this place was called Bud Light as like the beer. It's called Bug Light, B-U-G, Bug Light Park. Unbelievable. Anyway, the reason why this lighthouse was created was because it was to protect the inner harbor from ocean storms. I had never considered a lighthouse for a purpose like that. I don't know why. I thought it was just used for signal and communication, but that's also a valid point to use as well. Learn something new every day. The sun is finally coming out after hours and hours of rain. Thank you. Thank you. This is interesting. So there's a high watermark here. In February of 1978, there was a terrible storm and it brought in some flooding that caused a couple feet and it was really bad. Now they're looking ahead to 2050, which is less than 30 years from now. They're saying that unfortunately, South Portland will experience more intense and frequent flooding due to sea level from climate change. And if we don't make a difference, then they're saying that they're having a prediction of what the level rise will be during that time. I'll show you here really quick. So that's where it was in 1978. This is where it can get, and then you can even get up here. This is the only place so far that is required masks. 
but that could change when the winter months come, but just giving you a heads up now so then you're aware. Let's try this delicious granola that I got. This is delicious. You can tell that it's homemade. I will warn you, it's a popular bakery in Portland and it can get busy. So just make sure that you plan accordingly and understand that they are going to run out of things as the day goes on. I am so sorry, I got confused between this lighthouse and the bug light. This lighthouse is on the campus and you drive through it, you go to this fort and you see the lighthouse. The other one, bug light, is on the other side so you literally just go down a road a couple minutes. I got mixed up, I am sorry, <laughs> my bad. Out of the whole day, this is probably the most peace I've ever felt. It's so quiet here. I feel like I can't even talk because it's so quiet. I feel like Spring Point Ledge and Bug Light has allowed me to recenter and refocus. They don't really feel like tourism spots. For example, don't get me wrong, I loved Fort Williams, but it felt like tourism. Whereas here, it feels more at peace. You can sit down talk to someone, have a normal conversation, stuff like that. I know that shot is a little far away, but if anyone could tell me what type of bird that is, I would appreciate it because I am terrible about knowing my wildlife. I think this is becoming one of my favorite spots in Portland because I can smell the ocean, I can hear it, I see all these beautiful birds, I see a beautiful sight of a lighthouse. I saw so many beautiful sights of Portland today, but I think this is, be this is becoming my favorite. get the most beautiful sunsets out on the beach. I wasn't gonna go on that walk. I don't remember why, but I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna do that. But I decided to come back and that was so worth it. <laughs> so worth it. I'm so happy I ended the day on that note before we got some dinner. It's strange though, so I was in New Hampshire yesterday and I went down Artisan Bluff. If you have not seen it, I recommend you to. I was basically going down these steep rocks up and down. Had no anxiety, did not feel like any sort of, oh, I'm gonna fall in type of feel. You know what I'm talking about? Then when I went across here, I felt anxiety. I thought I was gonna trip in and go in for some reason. It's super weird, right? I would have thought I was going backwards. Now we're finally going to go to our last stop. And I'm so excited because it involves one of my favorite foods of all time.
this place is so aesthetically pleasing. I am so happy right now. <laughs> there are two locations. We're at the second one. This is just a little shack that's connected, or not connected, but beside a brewery. I don't know if I said that correctly, but you get what I'm saying. I actually enjoyed this spot better because the other location, I tried to go to that one first and it was so busy. I would have to wait forever so I came here instead and I'm really happy that I did. I got poutine with pork belly on top. Comes along with some duck gravy. And then I got a blueberry buttermilk milkshake. Let's try it. A little gravy. Oh yeah. That's the stuff. Are you ready? Get a good chunk in there. And finally, let's try the blueberry buttermilk milkshake. Wow, not bad. I'm used to getting cookies and cream or peanut butter and chocolate, but I wanted to try something different and put myself out there. It's really not that bad. Huh. That was hands down one of the best meals I've ever had. I think it's becoming one of my favorite meals on this trip right now. That was so good. But now I gotta start heading out for my next location and I hope to see you there. Don't forget to check out my other two states that I've been and I hope to see you soon on the tube, friends.